great. It's good to see Miss Kara again tonight. Amen. Praise God, I tell you. Good to see her. Ruby's back. Yeah. Amen. Well, guys, I got a message here that I've been wanting to deliver for some time. And it's only one verse. So we're going to be quick tonight. So if you would, stand with me. We're going to look at Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. And I tell you, your homework is to make this your memory verse. You'll probably rem- remember it before we're out of here tonight. Everybody got it? Romans 12.12 12. And thanks for standing in honor of the reading of God's word. It reads this way. It says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, it's once again that we come under the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, and we just thank you and we sit in anticipation of your message tonight. Lord God, my prayer always is that I decrease and you increase. And I pray that they hear the message and not the messenger. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. Paul writes this verse to encourage us and to tell us how we can handle tribulation. I like the way this verse is composed. It's very short. It has three parts. The first part says rejoicing in hope. Hope is the key to everything. If we have no hope, we are lost and we're miserable. Paul said we need to always rejoice in hope. Have you ever been in a situation that was hopeless and you didn't have any hope how did that make you feel how was that outcome wasn't good was it whenever you have a positive attitude about something it goes better why because it's going to help you and encourage you and strengthen you to go forward if you don't have hope You are going to die. Pretty simple. I was, um, this is a sad story, but my sister had got sick and her husband was sick. Well, my sister passed first and then her husband passed a few days later. Normally, when you see that, he lost all hope. He was her caregiver. He did everything for, for him. And then when she passed, they told him, and he just gave up. Rejoicing in hope. Where does your hope lie? In Christ. Christ should be your hope of glory. And Paul said you need to rejoice in your hope. God has gave us many promises. His benefits are many. And we need to rejoice in His hope. Matter of fact, here's what the Scripture says. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. We all know that one. Hebrews 11, 1. Let's read it. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. There's that word again. The evidence of things not seen. So your situation may be bad. You don't see how you're going to get out of it. But your hope, your faith is in Jesus. And as you think about Him and His promises, His track record, you can rejoice in that hope. Knowing that one day, everything's going to be alright. Never get to the point where you don't think it's going to be okay. God's word tells us that we need to rejoice in hope. And that simply means you're rejoicing in Him. Isn't that simple? We're simply rejoicing in Him. 
Isn't that a good thing to do, to rejoice in Him? I don't know about you, but whenever I'm going through trouble, and trouble's always around, I can rejoice in the hope that one day it'll all be over. I'll be in His presence forever. Where I, where they used to sing this old spiritual hymn, where time will be no more. Did you know time? Jesus stepped into time to deliver us to eternity. He stepped into time. Rejoicing in hope. We need to know who we believe. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. We were talking about where your hope lies. Second Timothy helps us out here. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. It reads this way. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am, am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What have you committed unto him? Do you believe that Jesus can handle your problems? Amen. Ms. Carrie, do you believe that? Amen. That Jesus can handle our problems. No matter what we're going through, He can handle it. So what we need to do is commit all of our problems unto Him. Matter of fact, He says this. He says, cast all your cares upon Him. For he careth for you. Rejoice in the hope of Jesus. Wow. So that's the first part. The next thing. Oh, also, before I leave there. We're talking about hope. Here's another way to help you remember. It is also confidence in the future. That's what hope gives us. We have confidence in the future for Him. So patient, so we can rejoice in hope because we have confidence in the future. Did you know He's already there? He holds the future. So we can have confidence in Him. Then the next point is patient in tribulation. And this is where our problem comes in. Whenever the heat is on, will you be patient? The heat will always tell you where you're at. Isn't that true? Yes. The heat will always tell you. So patient in tribulation means we can be consistent under pressure. We can be consistent under under pressure. Now, certain things just pop up. Trouble. But God tells us this, that we should not get bent out of shape. Look at this scripture. John chapter 16, verse 33. And this should be an encouragement until you, right here. John 16, 33. Wow. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We cannot avoid tribulation, folks. He told us that we will have tribulation. But the good news is, He has overcome the world. He is our source of strength. He will be with us. 
at any moment, it should be our second. I mean, no, it says, um, be a good cheer because he has overcome the world. He has defeated Satan. He has defeated death. And no matter what we're going through, we can have confidence in him. So we can be patient in tribulation. Sometimes when we're going through stuff, we want the Lord to hurry up and deliver us. Well, remember, sometimes He won't move it because He is molding us into the image of His Son. I can tell you I've been through some tough times. And I say, Lord, please remove this cup. That's what Jesus said. But, nevertheless... Not my will, but your will be done. So if you're under the pressure of the fire, the tribulation, I mean the um, yeah, tribulation, I want you to stand firm and be patient because he has overcome the world. Be patient. So many times we want to move. What did, uh, when Moses and them was trapped at the Red Sea, what did God tell them? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes God wants us to stand still and we'll watch Him work. Many a times we want God to remove the mountain, get us out the valley. But that's where He is actually changing our lives and we're getting closer unto him now the next thing here it says continuing instant in prayer wow what this means is at any moment whenever we are going through trouble it should be our second nature to pray Listen to what this verse says. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Prayer connects us to God. Think about that. Whenever we're not praying, we're not focused on Him. I want you to think about that. That's why He says continuing instant in prayer. What does instant mean? Quick. In a twinkling of an eye. That's the connection that you have to Him. It needs to be instant. And like this scripture here says in 18.1, is that we ought to always pray and not faint. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Let's look at that one. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Don't quit praying. Praying connects us to God. Now I want you to think about it. Whenever we pray, does God change or do we change? There you go. That was a trick question. Because God changes not. So whenever we are praying, God knows what He's already going to do. So it helps us focus in what He's going to do. So we have confidence in Him. So no matter what happens, we know that He does everything for our good and everything for His glory. So prayer focuses us on what's ahead. You know, we did a study on Nehemiah when he built the walls of Jerusalem. 
Remember, Nehemiah prayed four months. The wall took about two months. So Nehemiah prayed longer than it took the wall to be built. The power of prayer. Look what Paul gives us here. It says rejoicing in hope. Now let's break this scripture down here. This is how you can remember. Each part has three words. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Now don't you already got that memorized? Huh? You already got that memorized, isn't it? Rejoicing, patient, and instant in prayer. Now, I want you to take a look at the position of tribulation in this scripture. It is smack dab in the middle. Is it not? So if you want to have peace in the midst of of the storm you need to rejoice in hope and that's rejoicing in Jesus Christ and then you need to be instant in prayer and then all of this is surround, tribulation is surrounded by all of that isn't that good? anybody excited about that? I've been waiting to deliver that one for a long time <laughs> And you know, the, and I was walking the other day, walking my little dog Shorty, and the Lord said, "Look at the position of tribulation. It's right there in the middle." So whenever you encounter someone going through something, give them hope. You know, in the book of Jude, it says, "On some have compassion, making." A difference. My wife was in the store, Walmart, and a lady came up to her, was telling her all types of stuff. And then the lady was just crying on her shoulder. And you know what my wife did? Gave her hope and prayed with her. Did she not follow the scripture? This woman was in tribulation. She's meeting a stranger in Walmart and going to start spilling her guts to her. The lady was going through a lot of stuff my wife told her. But my wife said, I gave her encouragement. Told her about Jesus Christ and then prayed with her. I'm telling you tonight that whatever you are going through, know that you must have hope. And you must continue instant in prayer. Prayer connects us to Him. If you are not praying to God, you don't have a relationship with Him. Think about it. I mean, I talk to Him so much. He's probably sick of me, but I'm talking to Him all the time. But I talk to Him like I'm talking to you. I say, Lord, help me. Especially driving here in Charlotte. Or going to Walmart. <laughs> I say, Lord, give me strength here. But at any moment, in the instant, in the twinkling of an eye, we need to pray and ask the Lord to strengthen us, to get us through. Now, all of our hope rests on God's promises. Therefore, you need to know God's promises by getting into His Word. When you get into God's Word... That word sinks into your heart. And the Bible said that I may not sin against him. Do you know God's word? Think about it. Because you cannot rejoice in hope if you don't know. So, that was, that's basically it. Um, have faith in him, not the temporary. Put your faith in the alpha... And Omega. He knows the begin before the end. Isn't that awesome? So I want you to be encouraged tonight. It was a short message, but the message was titled Hope, Tribulation, and Prayer. And in the middle of all of that tribulation, it is surrounded by the hope of God and praying to God. 
So please make this your memory verse. Spread the word. Spread hope. So let's go over the scripture one more time. We'll re- let's read it together. And then we'll, we'll close out. Romans 12. Romans 12, 12. Are you ready? Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Wow! Woo! I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. Wow! So anybody got any questions before we close out? No questions? Well, if not, let's stand and we'll close out. I told you it will be short tonight. But please make this a memory verse. I mean, you're going to love it. Let's pray. Father God, it's once again that we come in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord God, we just thank you for the word that has went forth tonight. Lord God, as it talked about rejoicing in hope and being patient in tribulation and continuing instant in prayer. Lord God, our prayer is tonight that, Lord God, that we can take this message to a lost and dying world and let them know that their hope should be in Jesus Christ. And no matter what they're going through, they're only a prayer way to being saved. So, Lord God, we just thank you for all those that came out tonight. Lord God, we just thank you for their faithfulness. And, Lord God, we just pray for all the activities that's coming forth this weekend that you bless as only you know how. And we'll just thank you as we depart from this place. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.